checked out the video explaining to you guys what I'm doing for the revamp of my channel that is my last video and not only are we doing women's empowerment honey we are doing wigs and today I'm going to start you guys off with a solid foundation to creating a uh, one size fits most wig or creating a custom wig with exact measurements so there are four measurements and i have my little book here full of all my clients measurements and i got another one somewhere but um there are four to five measurements that i recommend you take so the first measurement is going to be your circumference and that goes around the perimeter of your head the second measurement is hairline to nape so it go i have a widow's peak so i go from the top of my widow's peak to the back of my hairline that's hairline to nape and then we have temple to temple. So you have a temple here, a temple here. You want to measure from that temple around the back of your head to the other temple. And then we have over ear to ear, which is from the top of your ear over to the top of your other ear. And then you have hairline, which is from the start of your hairline on one side to the start of your hairline on the other side. So you take those measurements and let's see my measurements. Uh, my circumference is 22, which is about average. Then you have um, my temple to temple is 17 and a half. My hairline to nape is 14 and a half. And my over ear to ear is 12 on uh, my over ear to ear and my hairline. So a lot of times you will find that that measurement is generally the same. If not the same, they're going to be very close. So once you know what your measurements are, which I recommend you take before you getting a wig head, then you want to move on to your wig head. So I got these wig heads from um, eBay many years ago. And so I like these wig heads because it has the back here, which is resembling the real a real head shape. So some of these wig heads like this one that I just brought from the hair store because it was a bundle deal. It ha it doesn't have much of, as much of a shape in the back as this one does. So you can really see the difference with the uh, realism concerning the, the head shape. So you want to, you can use, that one is still fine. You want to know what the circumference is. So this one is a 21, okay? And then you're going to see the difference. Let me take this off. This one is a 22. So you see here a difference. One is bigger than the other. This one is bigger than this one. Then you have a 23. And I normally stop at 23, but I do believe there are some 24s out there. So this one is a 23. And as you can tell, it is bigger than my 21 and also bigger than my 22 and you can definitely see the difference so being that i'm a 22 i would use this one if i was 21 and three quarters i would still use a 22 if i was um maybe 21 and a half, then I would still use a 21 because of that stretch. So I already have my cap marked here with the general measurements and I have it also marked in the back. Excuse the roughness, but these for one were $40 a piece and for two, they get me great results with my wig making. So um, I already have mine marked. But the cap that I like to use is a dome cap. And I buy this from my local beauty supply or I get them in bulk on Amazon. So you could do either or. But when I don't have any or I run out of my bulk, then I just run to the hair store and get some. Uh, the tag is generally, they stopped making it with a tag, I think. Yes. So the tag, there is no tag, but you can tell where the back is, which is this little v in the back so i put my wig my cap on my wig head and i always look for 
um, to precision in where I place my dome cap. So this wig head was made with these three lines and I try to make sure that they match up on both sides. And if it, if they don't, um, in terms of the width, then I just straighten it out to make sure that I have it on both sides. And I'm going to move it up to my marking in the back. So you can use these little T-pins, get them from the sewing section. I don't generally have to use the T-pins because I'm a little experienced, but if you want to keep your wig head in place, use the T-pins. So we have our 22 inch circumference wig head. We have our dome cap. Now what you do is you transfer the measurements that you took on your head, which these are my measurements. Kendra, so you take the measurements that you took on your head and you transfer and measure to make sure it matches up time on. So, as you can see, I'm at 22. I'm at 22 with my circumference. So, I know that's good. Then, uh, my temple to temple was 17 and a half. So, I try to imagine where my temple to temple would be or where my temples would be which would be about and then over ear to ear you just want to make sure this measures out properly and i have my over ear to ear was 12. and you can this it says 12 and a half so you can kind of you know give or take a half an inch or so when you're doing your measurements just for hair purposes. So this is considering that my hair is completely flat. I give myself sometimes a half an inch because if I don't feel like braiding my hair down, twisting my hair down or anything like that, I still have a little bit of room to give. And then my hairline to nape should be 14 and a half. And you wanna measure that and get your, yep, got my 14 and a half. So, you can do it as many times as you want. Normally, my process is when I'm measuring somebody or I have somebody measure themselves, I do it twice on the head and two to three times on the wig head to make sure that I'm okay with my foundation. Then once I get to, uh, then once I'm satisfied with that, then I start my sewing process. So that is basically all there is to um, taking your measurements. And another thing you want to be sure of is when you do that hairline to nape, you have to consider that lace is worn in front of the hairline. So if you are doing a lace unit, you most definitely want to give about maybe a quarter to a half an inch um, extra when you do your hairline to nape and transfer it on here. So if you want to do the actual measurement on your client, or yourself, and then when you get to the wig head, add about a half inch, like I said, you have to do a little bit of giving so the cap is not so tight and you have to consider, you know, placement and everything um, on the head. So it's not that hard, you just have to get those measurements, transfer those measurements. Once you have them transferred, then you can start your unit. They do have um, general measurements or one size fits most measurements. I've seen some online by just simply Googling one size fits most or average head measurements. And then I took it over time and doing more and more clients, I made those measurements my own by what I consider average for what for my experience. So you could do that as well. If you don't want to go with exact measurements or you're a wig maker and you want to just produce wigs without them being custom orders and you just want to be creative and do your own thing, then that's what you want to do. You want to use a one size fits most measurement and add that disclaimer because some women, you know, you have the elastic band inside the wig, you have the wig clip. So you have other means of making sure that that wig fits, even though it's not the exact size of of that client's head. So the next video I'm going to do, I'm a, I'm a black and white type of person. I believe one step at a time. So the next video that I will do and go in depth with is how to sew down a closure or a frontal because most people are doing some type of lace. So that way they are protecting their entire head and they don't have to worry about any type of leave out. I am so sorry if you guys hear my son 
he's three he's running around he don't care that i'm recording for youtube so Buddy. we're gonna go over that in depth on placement where they should be how to sew it down how to get it flat we'll go over all of that in depth and i'm gonna take you guys one step at a time to creating a great unit if even if you want to do it for yourself or your actual wig maker hopefully you learned uh the key to doing measurements and your wig sizes if you guys have any questions feel free to comment please hit the subscribe button and we will see you in the next